Oh, hi. Welcome back to my channel. Hope you guys are doing well. I'm super excited because I wanted to start my series with the Cockology books. I know, it's quite the name. Um, it's a game of self-discovery. There's only a few simple rules to the book. Let's see if I can find that page for you. All right, so eight tips for playing Cockology. Number one, say the first thing that pops into your head. Number two, play with other people if you can. It is more fun with other people, which is why if I do a live video or I share it on my YouTube, you can then go ahead and comment in the comment section your answers and we can kind of uh, bond that way. Three, don't try to predict the answers. Four, be honest with yourself. Five, be prepared. So for example, some of them are gonna ask you for pen and paper. Um, sometimes you have to write things out. Sometimes you have to draw things out. So just be prepared with different things. It usually tells me, or I'll tell you what to get before. Don't read ahead. Uh, watch people's reactions, including your own. You get to see my reaction. And keep an open mind. Those are the eight tips for playing Cockology. So it's pretty easy. I have played this book before with friends, um, but I started with, these are two volumes. So there's two volumes in this book. And I started with the first volume and it was pretty much back to back, you know, in order. Um, so I'm probably gonna avoid a lot of the ones in the beginning that I've done. Instead, what I'll do is I'll probably just randomly open the book up to any different scenario. And if it's one I've not done, then I will play that one with you. If not, I'll find another one. Um, I just wanted to go ahead and talk to you guys about water drops. Uh, no, I'm not a sponsor, but I would love to be. Uh, basically what it is, is Kevin got it for me for Christmas. It's incredible. It's water, you know, your normal water that you would get. These glasses are super cute. You can order a starter pack and it comes with all of these different drops, which I'll tell you all about. And then two frosted glasses. And I love the glasses and the size. It's just perfect amount of water. Uh, there's different flavors and or I guess flavors would be the answer to that. Uh, that are little droplets that you drop down into the water and they fizz and they change the condition and flavor of the water. I have the caffeinated one right now. I've already put it in there. Uh, basically, you peel it open and you drop it and it fizzes and it takes maybe 30 seconds to fully dissolve. And they do have like different flavors. This one is caffeinated, which I probably don't need at 4 p.m. today, but here we are. Uh, and you can choose between a bunch of different ones, but this is the one that I wanted. But this one kind of tastes like um, the mystery airhead flavor. So like that icy cherry flavor, that's kind of what the caffeinated one tastes like to me. But I will tell you, it totally works. Like it's a great revamp if you're fading throughout the middle of the day, or even if you want to have water in the morning to get you going, I would easily choose this over a glass of coffee, which I love coffee, so that's kind of hard for me to tell you, but uh, it definitely works very well. The other flavors are like love, um, youth, zen, there's a boost and a focus. And I think they have other flavors on the website, but they're all different flavors and they're supposed to do different things. The boost one is supposed to help uplift you kind of and get you going. Youth is more like beauty inspired inspired that kind of thing I love them I literally love them so if you guys want to try it uh, let me know and I will get some factual information to share with you about them because I really do enjoy them quite a lot and there's a code and I can give you the code it'll save me money it'll save you money and everybody's happy so cheers to water drops try it out again not a plug not a sponsor but water drops, if you're watching, I would gladly sponsor your stuff. Okay, so Cockology book, here we go. I'm just gonna randomly open it to, I don't know, uh, here. Okay. You gotta find the actual thing, that's the key. Okay, 
we might get more than one in. The, every scenario is a little different. Sometimes they're a little bit more involved, so there's like multiple in a row, and then other times, um, you know, it's, it's like one answer for the whole thing. So we'll see. It involves reading, so I hope you're good at listening. <laughs> Sorry. Hopefully I'm a good entertaining reader and you can hear me well and you like my voice and I enunciate to your liking. <laughs> this is called Returns Policy. It can be hard to tell others how you really feel about them. Searching for just the right word or gesture to express your true feelings is never easy. And maybe it's never more difficult than when the person you're trying to address is someone you secretly love. For some, speaking those three little words, I love you, takes more courage than facing the gravest physical threat. You have decided to admit your true feelings to a person you've loved from a distance for what seems like ages. You have, have brought a small gift to help show your sincerity and the depth of your love. But when you finally take that leap and offer yourself, that person says, I'm sorry, but I can't take this from you. I'm in love with someone else. Oof, only time will heal your broken heart. The more immediate question is, what do you do with the unwanted gift? All right, so this is the scenario. It is multiple choice and there's only four and that's the end of the scenario. So there's a meaning to all of this. Basically, you love someone for a very long time. They don't know it. It's secret. You say, I'm going to, I'm going to do it. You go and you buy something for them to help show them that you really care for them. And they said to you, I'm sorry, but I cannot take this from you. I don't, I don't want to, I'm in love with someone else. You're hurt. So what do you do with the unwanted gift? You answer one through four. One, you use it yourself. Two, you give it to someone else. Three, you throw it away. Four, you send it by mail to the person who turned you down. Write down your answer. Keep it to yourself. I'll share mine probably, maybe. It, it just depends on how deep these scenarios get because they do get deep. Um, so if you're an open book, I love it. Share your answers with me. I would love to hear all about it. If you're not an open book, and you're reserved or you're a little bit shy, that's okay too. You don't have to share everything. This would be the point in the video where I would say, if you haven't answered the question, please go back, watch it and listen and answer the question so that you can continue forward. Okay, here's the key. So you picked one through four I will break it all down. Few experiences evoke as strong a reaction as the reject blah 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 blah. Few experiences evoke as strong as a reaction as the rejection of love. In extreme cases, it can transform a simple passionate longing into a passionate longing for revenge. What did you do with the rejected symbol of your oh what did what you did? Let's try again. What you did with the rejected symbol of your love shows the degree to which you are able to recover and get on with your life or tend to linger in a world of broken dreams. This coincides with the levels of acceptance and persistence that show that... Why am I struggling? This coincides with the levels of acceptance and persistence that show in dealing with life setbacks. Number one, if you chose number one, Use it yourself. A stoic, you face reality hard head on. Like a stoic, you prefer to keep a reminder of your heartache until it fades with the passage of time. You can be honest with yourself in saying, that hurt, because you know you have the strength to take the pain and wear it like a badge of honor. What you see as a demonstration of character can also be read as a way of taking revenge by never letting the other person forget how much he or she hurt you. So that's your answer for number one. Number two, give it to someone else. You try to make the most of a bad situation by ridding yourself of an unpleasant reminder and simultaneously making another person happy. 
you don't put all of your eggs in a single basket and that gives you the freedom to forget about setbacks quickly and get on with life. And even though things may not have worked out to your liking this time, there is bound to be someone out there who will fall in love with the fundamental goodness of your nature. Three, throw it away. You may think that by throwing away the gift, you're throwing away all of the memories and pains associated with it as well, but you are actually the type who dwells most deeply on hurts and rejections unable to let go of the past. You may toss that ring in the river only to have it come out of your faucet the next morning. You can't throw away memories or pain, only learn to live with them. Number four, send it by mail to the person who turned you down. You seek closure for yourself, even if it means ignoring the wishes of a person you thought you loved. This approach may actually be the healthiest for you because it lets you say, I did everything that I set out to do. The rest was beyond my control. That's the one I picked. I picked number four. What do you guys think? Were your answers accurate? Did they make sense? Not every single one will make sense. I feel like a lot of them vary. So yeah, let's do, let's do one more. Okay. Uh, let's do here. Okay. So it's another shorter one. Okay. It's called just can't wait. Starting work at a new job is always stressful. The unfamiliar people and environment, the million new things to be learned, the feeling of wanting to do a good job, and of course the inevitable goofs. We learn by making mistakes, then trying not to repeat them. A friend of yours has taken a job waiting tables at a restaurant. One day you, desi you decide to visit and see how the new job is going. But when you step inside, you see your friend has gotten into some kind of trouble with one of the customers. What did your friend do wrong? Choose one item from the menu below. All right, so your friend is waiting tables. You decide to visit to see how the new job's going. You step inside, your friend's gotten into some kind of trouble with one of the customers. What did your friend do wrong? And you're gonna pick one answer, one through four. Number one didn't come to the table after being called several times Two, made a mistake by taking the order and brought the wrong food three spilled something on the customer's clothes four started to clear the table before the customer had finished eating so i wrote down my answer you can write down your answer or keep it up here whatever you want to do but Go back and answer the question if you haven't already. Okay. Key to just can't wait. Your friend in the restaurant is a psychological stand-in for you. The mistake you saw your friend make is rooted in your own unconscious recognition of a personal weakness of your own, particularly in terms of responding to the needs of others. The mistakes you imagined your friend making are the very problems you find in your own love life. Number one, didn't come to the table after being called on several times. If you picked that, this is the meaning. You see yourself as lacking in the ability to concentrate and focus yourself on your partner. When out for a date, you might simply just wander away from your date when you see something that catches your fancy or maybe you're always getting caught with your eyes looking where they shouldn't be. That lack of focus might be interpretative as a lack of caring, so try to pay a little more attention. Hello, are you listening? Number two, made a mistake taking the order and brought the wrong food. You come up short in the personal responsibility department. Maybe this manifests itself as always being late or bringing along uninvited friends to what was planned as an evening for two. If romances are like a contract between two people, you've committed more than your share of breaches. If you want a happier love life, make a stronger policy of thinking about your partner's feelings before you do something. Three, spilled something on your customer's clothes. You're too nervous when it comes to dating. You want everything to be perfect and for everything to go smoothly, but it's difficult for others to relax when you make such a fuss over every last detail. You might make a good first impression by being so serious, 
but it's easy to see how people could quickly get tired of the high stress level. And number four, it started to clear the table before the customer had finished eating. You tend to jump the gun when it comes to love. The eagerness may seem charming at first, but after a while, it feels as though you're always chomping at the bit. Slow down and let your partner have a chance to breathe. You may find yourself with nothing but time on your hands. I will share my answer because normally I'm careful with what I share, but I chose number two. So that was my answer of my first instant. That's what I thought first happened. But yeah, <laughs> pretty interesting book, right? Sure, it's probably all made up mumbo jumbo. I don't care. I love it. I think it has a lot of hidden meanings and attitudes that come through. I think it's applicable. It ends up being relatable and it's a lot of fun to do with people. So thanks for listening. I hope you answered. Please comment below. I would love to know your answers if you're willing to share them with me. And I have way more personality books coming. This is just like one of the game books and we can do more from this book as well if you would like that. So if it's a good video, please hit that thumbs up. If you enjoyed it and you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. I really wanna make this something. I, I'm having a lot of fun already and it would be amazing if it did become a pretty big channel that covers all different areas that are passionate to me. So if you enjoyed it, thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications if you have issues checking in, but I will be sharing every time I post a video. So thanks guys, I hope you be well.